This is CNN Breaking News. And welcome to everyone joining us from all around the world. I am Paula Newton in New York. You are watching CNN, and we begin with major breaking news from Russia and the release of Trevor Reed, the former U.S. Marine who's been imprisoned in Russia since 2019. The White House confirming the news in the last hour said he's been freed in a prisoner swap in exchange for a Russian citizen. Now, Trevor Reed's parents gave their reaction to my colleague, Brianna Keeler, just a short time ago. I want you to listen to this emotional exchange. Obviously, we're ecstatic. Uh, Joey's here, too. Hi, Joey. Tell us how you're feeling. Uh, hard to explain. <laughs> Answer prayers. Yeah. So many prayers. Your prayers, the people that you have uh, reached out to and that have been so aware here of Trevor's plight. Can you tell us, Paula, how you found out that he was going to be released? Uh, yeah, we found out. We got a call from the State Department. And, and when was that? Can you tell me about that? Uh, I don't think we're allowed to tell you about that, but then we also got a call from the president. Yeah, Amazing. Uh, as, soon as, Trevor, as soon as Trevor was released, we were actually on the phone with Trevor when uh, the president called. <laughs> so, um, and uh, he, again, gr totally gracious and, and wonderful and kind and said he looked, forward, he looked forward to seeing us in the White House again. So, And tell us how Trevor's feeling. Tell us what, what he said about this. Um, he's, he sounds kind of subdued. I think he's a little overwhelmed. Um, they, yeah, he they, seemed to be in shock a little bit. They, they had moved him to another prison. They had moved him to a Moscow prison this week. We, we didn't know that. Uh, he's in, went to the same prison that I think Paul Whelan was held in for a long time, La, La, For, La uh prison. And then they flew him from there to Turkey. And then um, Trevor quickly told us that they – the American plane pulled up next to the Russian plane, and they walked both prisoners across at the same time, like you see in the movies. In Turkey. In Turkey, and they and then uh, they were leaving Turkey uh, and in the air when when he called he called us and told us this. So they're they're en route back to we believe to the United States, but they can't tell us for sure. So. So you, do you expect Joey to see him soon? Uh, we're not sure they haven't told us that. We're actually expecting the State Department at our house any minute. They're going to come and give us more logistics and how things are going to happen. But mostly we're just glad that obviously he's on his way home, but they also have a doctor on the plane. So he's getting checked out, and that was our main concern. Well, Paula, and that's what we've been talking about for so long, right? He has had symptoms of tuberculosis. He was exposed to tuberculosis. He had been complaining about what he thought was cartilage or a bone or something sticking out of his abdomen. What can you tell us about right. how he's physically feeling? Um, you know, Trevor always underplays how he's feeling, but he, so he just said, I'm fine, I'm fine. But, you know, we'll see. At least he's getting checked out. Yeah, we're, we're praying that he doesn't have tuberculosis, but we're still concerned, uh, you know, that he was coughing up blood for months. So um, it could be leftovers from his COVID uh, back in, you know, late or middle of last year. So, so this is all <laughs> pretty recent news, right? I mean... Are you guys still in shock? Uh, yes, a little bit. <laughs> we're we're uh, we believe that that meeting with the president is uh, what, what made it happen, and uh, it was a tipping point for sure. Which is what we had said all along. If we could just speak to the president, we just he's that kind of person, and and uh, and we, as always, we also we want to remember Paul Whelan, um, and we need to get him out of there. And uh, he's he's innocent, along with, you know, dozens of Americans all over the world uh, that we need to get out of those places, too. And uh, we we just want the president to to keep going what he started here and, and with the the uh, couple of prisoners in Venezuela. We, we need to get all of our Americans home. Look, Paula and Joey, it's amazing that you're trying to turn the focus now on other people who are so in need. Uh, I do want to ask you, Paula, when you see him in person, finally, you know, what are you going to do? What do you want to say? Well, I'm going to try not to cry because he doesn't want me to cry. <laughs> but obviously, I'm going to cry a little bit and give him big hugs and um, just, you know, just give him hugs. And um, it'll be the four of us together again in, in a few years. So it's going to be great. I can't imagine what it has been like for you not to be able to touch him, to give him a hug. Uh, Joey, the yeah. same for you as well. I wonder, you know, what do you want? What do you want to say to him? Well, I want to hug him and not let him go. Um, 
And, you know, I, I was in Russia for 14 months, and I probably went to at least 20 different trial hearings where he's standing in a cage, and they, they won't let me touch him, shake his hand or, or anything. So, uh, obviously, uh, it'll, be, it'll be good to, to finally give my son a hug. I can't blame you for kiss. not wanting to let him go. Um, and he's going to put up with that kiss. And I think he's going to put up with you crying, Paula, as well. Um, Paula, what do you <laughs> yes, want to say to the... I know you spoke to the president. Um, what did you tell him? What do you, what, what do you want to say now that you maybe had a moment well, to collect your thoughts? Well, we tell the president, obviously, that we were very grateful for his uh, quick action. And we, we, we were so thankful. And he said, I understand that you must be feeling excited or whatever. And then... Um, he said, I wanted to call you, but I didn't want to, you know, jinx it during the middle of the night. So I waited until now. And he said, I'm happy for you. Congratulations. And then we said, Joey told him that when we see him again, well, he said he wanted to have us at the White House. And then Joey said, well, when we see you again, we're probably going to want to give you a big hug. Okay, so an emotional hour there in the last hour for the parents of Trevor Reed. Nada Bashir joins me now with the latest. I know you've been following this as it's been breaking you know, it, it was an emotional call, and clearly his parents um, quite happy. They're juggling ca calls between their son and the president. Uh, yet this really involved a lot of backroom diplomacy on the part of the United States and Russia. What more do we know about the fact that this wasn't a prisoner swap, that there was, in fact, a Russian citizen held in the United States that was exchanged? What more do we know? Yeah, absolutely, Paul. And this is interesting timing, of course, taking place with the backdrop of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Clearly, uh, the diplomatic talks between Russia and the United States in, over the course of this invasion have been uh, frailed and fragmented, uh, to say the least. But clearly, those diplomatic channels are still open. And we heard just in the last hour or so from Russia's foreign ministry spokesperson describing these talks, these negotiations as a lengthy process. And that is uh, certainly what it's been. Of course, uh, Trevor Reed's arrest taking place back in 2019 and in 2020 uh, sentenced to nine uh, years. Of course, uh, the U.S. has long maintained that he was innocent, that this is a miscarriage of justice. But we were expecting a lengthy prison sentence there for Trevor Reed. So clearly, uh, some pretty intense negotiations have been taking place uh, between the diplomatic representatives of the U.S. and Russia uh, in the background. We've heard from President Biden. He said that this wasn't uh, an easy uh, decision to make, that prisoner swap that we heard from his parents taking place uh, in Turkey. There. Let me just read you a bit from Biden's statement. He said, the negotiations that allowed us to bring Trevor home required difficult decisions that I do not take lightly. His safe return is a testament to the priority my administration places on bringing home Americans held hostage and wrongfully detained abroad. We won't stop until Paul Whelan and others join Trevor in the loving arms of family and friends. So clearly this has long been a priority for the Biden administration. There do remain others in detention uh, in Russia and that continues to be a concern for the U.S. government. But you heard there from Trevor's parents, clearly a, a dramatic, well, they've described it's quite a dramatic prisoner swap, describing it as something like in the movies uh, in Turkey. This has been part of intense negotiations, but clearly uh, the U.S. government will uh, be expected to share more details in the coming uh, hours and days with regards to what diplomatic talks took place and uh, what really is at stake for the others still in detention in Russia. Paula? Yeah, and of course, Trevor Reed's parents, they're mentioning Paul Whelan, who has been held for several years as well, his family awaiting news, but also, of course, the case of Brittany Griner, who is the professional uh, basketball player, American, uh, who's been held uh, for more than two months now uh, in Russia. This certainly gives them hope. As you rightly point out, Nada, this means that there is communication between uh, the United States and Russia in terms of having the prisoner swap. What's interesting here is... The person, of course, that Russia asked for, uh, it's interesting sometimes when this happens, they will ask that more than one prisoner be swapped. Uh, in terms of what we know, what did we hear from Russia about how they decided to do this prisoner exchange? Well, look, we are still getting the details uh, around this prisoner exchange. We heard uh, from Foreign Ministry spokesperson Maria Zakharova in the last hour or so. She uh, identified this Russian citizen as Konstantin uh, Yaroshenko. He'd been sentenced to 20 years uh, in prison by an American court in 2010, so uh, far earlier 
then of course Trevor Reed. But you mentioned there the others still in detention. Uh, there are concerns around their health. And clearly, while we are still getting the details around this Russian uh, individual who has taken part in this prisoner swap, there will certainly be some focus on uh, Paul Whelan and Brittany Groner, who have been in detention and continue to be in detention uh, in Russia, particularly, as you mentioned, there, around health concerns. That was certainly a concern uh, around Trevor Reed's case. We heard from his family. They were even uh, taking part in protests outside the White House on hunger strikes, uh, concerned over their son's health. That has been a concern uh, for Paul Whelan as well and of course Brittany Griner. So there will certainly be uh, increased focus on that and on the decisions that the US government will be taking going forward with regards to those diplomatic efforts. Paula? Yeah, you make such a good point. Again, you know, Trevor Reed telling uh, his parents he was okay, but his father then pointing out that, look, he, he's been coughing up blood for some time. They did indicate there was uh, a doctor with him uh, on in flight right now. We expect to hear more in the coming hours about when that family reunion may take place. Nada Bashir, really appreciate you getting on top of this story uh, in the last few minutes.